Airbus has provided an update on the progress and challenges of hydrogen-fueled aircraft. The aviation business is rapidly expanding, and technology is assisting airliners in reducing fuel consumption and improving passenger safety. The majority of new aircraft launched in the recent decade have had fewer accidents, indicating that technology has contributed to smoother aviation operations. However, as we have seen, most aircraft emissions are a substantial contributor to air pollution. To address this issue, most aerospace companies are designing new aircraft that are anticipated to minimize emissions while still being cost-effective. Airbus and Boeing are working hard to produce the most fuel-efficient and low-carbon emission aircraft possible. Boeing's Echo Demonstrator, which was tested on Boeing 737 MAX and 787 Dreamliner aircraft. Boeing has previously proven that sustainable aviation fuel can be flown effectively. Airbus, on the other hand, is also tested 100% sustainable aviation fuel in its A320 family of aircraft and the A350. Airbus provided the first report on its work in developing hydrogen-powered aircraft, which are expected to be operational by 2035. It is extremely difficult for Airbus to build hydrogen-supporting components for aircraft and their operations. Airbus is currently developing cutting-edge liquid hydrogen tanks to help door to a new era of environmentally friendly flight. One of the most promising solutions for reducing aviation's climate effect is hydrogen. It emits no CO2 when it is produced using renewable energy sources. It provides roughly three times the energy per unit mass of ordinary jet fuel, and more than 100 times the energy per unit mass of lithium-ion batteries. This makes it ideal for aviation propulsion. Furthermore, hydrogen fuel cells generate electrical power, which is used to supplement the gas turbine, resulting in a highly efficient hybrid electric propulsion system. All of these technologies work together to provide additional benefits. However, storing hydrogen on an aircraft presents a number of difficulties. Hydrogen may have more energy per unit of mass than kerosene, but it has less energy per unit of volume. To obtain the same amount of energy as one liter of kerosene fuel at normal atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature, approximately 3,000 liters of gaseous hydrogen would be required. Obviously, this is not possible in flight. One option is to pressurize the hydrogen to 700 bars, which is a method utilized in the automotive industry. In Airbus scenario, the 3,000 liters would be reduced to just 6 liter. Developing hydrogen storage tanks is a huge challenge. That now consists of an inner and outer tank separated by a vacuum, and a specialized material, such as multi-layer insulations, to reduce heat transfer through radiation. Arian's involvement with Airbus, it is a series of civilian disposable launch vehicles developed by the European Union for use in space launches. This also applies to space technology, which aids in cryogenic testing and fuel sloshing management. Safety aspect is especially significant since spacecraft operations differ from commercial aircraft, in that they must withstand about 20,000 takeoffs and landing and must keep hydrogen in a liquid condition for a substantially longer period of time.
Airbus is planning to use hydrogen-powered fuel engines in its three aircraft frames for operations. Number 1. Turbofan. For turbofan engines liquid hydrogen storage and distribution system is located behind the rear pressure bulkhead. Number 2. Turboprop. For turboprop engines the liquid hydrogen storage and distribution system is located behind the rear pressure bulkhead. Number 3. Blended wing body. The exceptionally wide interior opens up multiple options for hydrogen storage and distribution. Here, the liquid hydrogen storage tanks are stored underneath the wings. Two hybrid hydrogen turbofan engines provide thrust. As a last remark, Airbus believes that liquid hydrogen tanks for commercial flights will most likely be metallic. Tanks made of composite materials, on the other hand, may be lighter and more cost-effective to manufacture in the long run. The zero emission development centers are projected to be completely operational and ready for ground testing in 2023, with flight testing beginning in 2025. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.